everyone, this is Mommy Emmy, the Super Mom. Welcome to my channel. In today's video, we are going to have an interview from a 30-year fitness trainer. And hindi niyo mapapaniwalaan to, but she is my sister. She is my eldest sister. Okay? Take note. In this interview, uh, my sister, Aria Guevara Masay, will define what balance means to her. Okay, and then how she deals with temptations when it comes to uh, food intake and then how she keeps her workout interesting and of course many many more uh, that pertains to uh, staying fit and staying healthy. Hi sis, welcome to my channel and thank you so much for taking the time to do this interview. Alright, so I know our viewers will enjoy it. To start with, can you introduce yourself and tell us what you do? Hi everyone, I'm Ria. I'm the Ate of Supermom Emmy. It's a pleasure to be here on your channel and this should be fun, sis. Thanks for having me. I am a certified fitness trainer for 30 years now and Man, that's a long time. But I really enjoy this profession for as long as I can remember. What made you uh, become a fitness trainer? I was first introduced to fitness uh, way back when I was still in Kalibo, Oklan. Uh, we used to have this student center back then. And uh, I attended one of these aerobic classes led by an, an American missionary and eventually she has to return back to the USA and left the class under my supervision and that's how I got started that's how I know that God is leading me into this kind of profession at a very young age I definitely found out for myself that that made me the happiest when I used to teach people how to take care of themselves and how to take care of their health. You know, this profession had brought me places. I've been to Kuwait and I'm so grateful to God that He had given me that blessing and I was able to meet a lot of amazing people in the industry. I was able to train amazing people, including royalty, back in Kuwait. And now I am here in the USA. And I'm so blessed that even up to this point of my life, I'm 53 years old, by the way, and I'm still uh, doing my best and doing continuing education because that's required for most, for all certified fitness trainers, that you have to do a continuing education every two years in order to retain your license to train people. And it has been such a rewarding uh, profession because I get to help and train people on how to maintain a good quality of life as they get older. I'm just so curious, sis. Do you still eat desserts? I mean, uh, can you be healthy and fit at the same time while eating dessert once or twice a week or every week? Of course I eat desserts. That's why I work out like crazy. But when I turned 50, and there's a lot of hormonal imbalances. I started gaining fat around my waistline. Oh. 
I know for sure that I started having this um, insulin resistance due to hormonal imbalances. It really is a sense of responsibility on what you put inside your body and how your body will react to it. And most of the time, in my case, sugar is my nemesis. Breakers. So take note, she still eats dessert. <laughs> All right, next question. Okay, what is a typical day of uh, eating include for you? I mean, what do you eat every day? I do um, my cardio on a fasted state. That means I haven't eaten yet. So I do that first and I take my breakfast before going to the gym. It's not really advisable to lift weights on a fasted state because your muscles need a lot more of energy, especially if you're looking to have a great um, performance lifting weights. For me, I usually break my fast because I fast for 16 hours and then I have an eight hours window to eat my entire calorie intake for the day. So I usually do a pre-workout supplement before working out. And I usually take that after my breakfast. After that, I, I take a protein shake for recovery 30 minutes after lifting weights. And then probably have a light lunch and a dinner. I'm making sure that all of that, uh, all of my meals are within that uh, eight hours window of eating. So when I'm fasting, I usually start eating by nine o'clock in the morning. And then I end my meals at 5 p.m. And the rest of that time, including the sleeping time, is just fasting. And how about in exercises or in working out? What does a typical week of ex exercise look like? Now, and then how do you change up your routine? I usually start my morning with fasted cardio. I usually try to finish a three mile walk every morning and then I lift weights four times a week and then I change my routine every four weeks. How do you find a balance in between like coaching and then uh, personal training, you know, uh, work, uh, you're doing your own workouts and then of course having your life like a uh, wife your household responsibilities and everything how do you do it how do you balance everything you really have to plan your day otherwise you'll plan to fail that day without that i feel disorganized of course if you're not organized i always start my day with god it's important because for me, I, you know, whether you are a Jesus follower or not, you need to have an anchor bigger than you. And for me, that is my God. And without Him, I am nothing. Now that I am retired, I was able to have a much better structure of my day. And, um, I was given a channel in YouTube by God and you know I've never imagined myself to be able to do vlogging in the first place because I don't like talking in front of the camera. Thanks Am. Oh no! <laughs> and uh, if you watch my, my channel it's, uh, it's called When Fitness Meets Faith. Uh, you would know that I really don't like talking in front of the camera but the 
the way I do my vlogging is more of a storytelling kind. So I hope you guys will be able to check it out one of these days. I usually begin my day as usual. God, exercise, do house chores, run errands, uh, you know, wait for my husband to come home and do dinner. And of course, within my day, I get to work on vlogging. So everything has a balance. There's supposed to be a balance in every single part of your life because if you do an excess of this and a little bit of that, that's not going to make you happy at all. And for us, for me, in my own experience, that doesn't make me feel like I did something worthwhile that day. So sometimes in our lives, there will be times that um, you will be filled with activities that doesn't really add up to your being. And as I gotten older, I have learned how to say no to a lot of things that affects my health, affects my the quality of time that I spend in my home and my husband. And uh, the rest of that, I have to make sure that Everything that I do is actually going to add up to the glory of God and His kingdom. Who or what gives you uh, the most inspiration? Like, uh, where do you get the fitspiration from? Fitspiration from. Hashtag inspired of people who take care of themselves of their health consistently I think it's my biggest pet peeve when I used to train people and they'll show up one day and then not show up for the entire oh, year no. <laughs> yeah I have encountered a lot of clients in my fitness career and uh, lately when I uh, started training an older demographic here in the U.S. That means, means people who are in their 50s all the way up to their 90s. And I realized how fulfilling it is, it, it was, to uh, train this group of people in the gym. Because most of the time, I used to teach younger demographics and, man, <laughs> uh, I've seen people making excuses after excuses and oh, no. complaining while working out. And uh, no matter what, how much motivation you give them, they still will not uh, do their best. And... I know it's a part of training people at the gym, but recently having trained older people, even those who are in their wheelchair and uh, people who are uh, having all these issues and still trying their best to be able to take care of themselves has been such an inspiration to see. And um, I have the honor of knowing all these people at the later part of my career and it still inspires me to do better with my own health and I still advise a lot of um, younger people to do the same because you know being in fitness and there's a lot of uh, what they call this they just want to look good they just want to fit in a dress or there's an occasion that's coming up and they need to look their best in that occasion and most of the time after those reasons are over they go back to their unhealthy ways and gain weight again and at the end you know as you get older overweight uh, that gives you 
the end result of being sick as you get older and uh, those are the things that I still make sure and instill in most of my clients mind that if you're gonna train and if you want me to train you make sure that you have a long-term goal not just because of a short-term one it's not that it's wrong to have a short-term goal but fitness is hard work and it takes a lot of dedication and it takes a lot of it takes a lot out of you and your life so if you have a very shallow reason why you want to be healthy and fit then it's not gonna stick so uh, it really inspires me when I see people that despite of all their hardships in life they prioritize their health can you share with us what are your picks uh, with your perfect meals like during your breakfast what do you usually eat uh, before you work out or after you work out uh, during dinner and do you still eat snacks within a day well usually I skip breakfast but it doesn't mean I can not eat breakfast food at any time of the day anything that pertains to breakfast is my favorite food uh, like pancakes um, waffles um, eggs bacon you know all that stuff uh, pre-workout I usually just take some BCAA for pre-workout uh, post-workout I usually have my whey protein shake dinner usually has uh, vegetables any form of protein like beef chicken fish snacks well because I'm on a ketogenic diet, I usually snack on pork rinds, nothing with carbs, and uh, I snack on nuts and peanut butter. Mm -hmm. I said it. Being a fitness trainer for almost 30 years, what can you say about this very famous intermittent fasting? and ketogenic diet or the low-carb diet and to whom would you advise the intermittent fasting and the ketogenic diet or the low-carb diet first off educate yourself about this because there's a lot of false information out there there is a disadvantage and also an advantage living in the information age because we can just find all this kind of information out there in one click it doesn't mean that what you're learning online is the real deal you know what I mean so make sure if you're gonna learn about intermittent fasting and ketogenic diet is coming from people who are certified to talk about it so i would recommend that you watch gauge girl training she's a food scientist and she's also a chemical engineer and she's one of those people that had taught me and improved my way of uh, eating um this past two years and she really had helped me realize things and you know in the world of fitness we're more um, inclined to design workouts but nutrition is like you learn that in passing not really in depth so what I did was really educate myself about macronutrients not just about counting calories but making sure that the entire calorie intake of yours is based on what macronutrients are you eating more or most because in my case 
I used to do a bodybuilder kind of eating where there's like 40 to 50 percent of carbohydrates and uh, protein in there and less of fat because ketogenic diet is 70 to 75 percent fat there's 20 to 25 percent protein and 5 percent carbs knowing that it really changes your view of you know the the basic calories in and calories out in order to lose weight so to some people who are diabetics and pregnant and all sorts of other health issues you really have to consult your doctor first in my case when I started really looking at the macronutrients that I'm taking in every day, that really made me realize what's making me gain weight, despite of what I do at the gym, or despite how healthy I was eating. I know that I have some kind of insulin resistance going on because of what's happening with my weight gain. Thank you.